This is our first session on Matthew eleven twenty five to 30. There will be several because what we have here is so rich with the doctrine of divine election and human responsibility of faith and the sovereignty of Christ in revealing the Father and the free offer of the gospel and the sweetness of, of the rest were offered in Christ and so much more. So I hope you'll stay with us. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and have revealed them to children. So he's hidden and he's revealed. Yes, Father, for thus was a good pleasure before you. That's my literal translation, that little phrase. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. No one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So, Father, as we put on the yoke, of Jesus by learning from him what he has to say here. Would you make this yoke sweet and easy? Would you cause the burden of this truth to be light? Because that's what you do. You will know the truth. You will learn the truth from me, and the truth will set you free from heavy burdens. God, show us what's here, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. At that time means that he has something to say about just went, what what just went before. We've done, we've done two labs on what just went before, namely verses 20 to 24. What was the issue raised here that will now be explained or answered in the following verses? Here's the issue. He began to denounce the cities where most of his mighty works had been done because they didn't repent. So Chorazin didn't repent and Bethsaida didn't repent. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. If the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Now, here's, here's the kicker. Tyre and Sidon received works, but not the works that brought them to repentance, even though Jesus knew exactly what would have brought them to repentance, right? If the mighty works done in you, so I'm able to do these, I did them in you, had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented, and I evidently didn't do them. He didn't. He didn't do them because he says they haven't repented. They would have repented. They didn't repent, but they would have had he done the works that he did here. Why didn't he do them? That's the question. Same thing here in verse 23. You, Capernaum, would you be exalted to heaven? You you will be brought down to Hades. For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained to this day. So Sodom had the works been done there by God that were done in Capernaum, they would not have been judged by God. And God didn't do them. He knew what would have brought Sodom to repentance so that it would have remained instead of being judged with brimstone and fire. And he didn't do them. So there's the question. There's the question. Why didn't Tyre and Sidon receive these works that would have brought them to repentance? And why didn't God do the works in Sodom that would have brought them to repentance? That is what these verses are about in verses 25 to 30. At that time, at that time when I was just talking about those cities like that, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father. It's the word for confess or praise. Father, I 
happily agree, confess. I say the same thing. I agree, Father. And then he adds, you're the Lord of heaven and earth. You, you rule and do as you please in heaven and on earth because you are the Lord. So I praise you, Father, as the Lord with all authority that you have hidden these things. That's the connection with the preceding verses. Those cities had things hidden from them or they would have repented. Jesus didn't do in them the kind of works that would reveal these things. He hid these things from the wise and understanding, and he revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, thus was a good pleasure to you. So the, the explanation, just the first initial explanation for why Tyre and Sidon and Sodom did not receive the mighty works that would have brought them to repentance and caused them to remain to this day is because God hid these things. He reveals them to babes. That's the explanation. There's lots more to say about that, but that's the, be that's the beginning of it. Now, Here's the first question that comes to our mind. How does wise and understanding as the people from whom these things are hidden, and I take these things to mean at least the things that you need to know in order to repent, because that's what they didn't do. They needed to know who Christ was, what their sins were, who the Father was, all of which is coming here. And they didn't have these things revealed to them. They were hidden. And he describes the people that get hidden from are wise and understanding. And, and he describes the people that get revealed, little children. Now, what does that have to do with these cities? Because there isn't anything said here, is there, about being wise and understanding or about being little children, or is there? There's one clue. You test this. So he talks about, woe to you, Chorazin, woe to you, Bethsaida. There's a, there's a judgment being pronounced here, but he doesn't say what it was about them. That, that created the problem and the hindrance. But look at what he says about Capernaum. And you, Capernaum? Now, that's, that's where he did most of his works. He, he had a lot of, of time he spent in Capernaum. You, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? Why did he say that? He said that. I mean, that the clear implication at least it seems clear to me, is that they were saying something like that. That was their attitude. We've been privileged by having this great prophet here among us so much and whatever. He doesn't tell us what their, their presumption was, but the presumption is you think you're going to be exalted to heaven, don't you? And that's what I think this right here refers to. He has hidden these things from the wise and understanding. He detected a kind of arrogance in some of these cities. And it caused him not to do the kind of works or quantity of works or works in such a way that would bring about repentance. He has hidden these things from Capernaum. He's hidden these things from Chorazin and Bethsaida because there's a pointer, at least with Capernaum, that they were presumptuous. We're going to be exalted to heaven. We have some privilege that uh, we can boast in. And when he hears something like that, he's not moving in toward revealing. He's moving away toward concealing. But instead, he reveals to little children. Now we'll pause there and pick it up there next time. And, and a huge question for us is going to be, well, now wait a minute. It says 
the Father has hidden and revealed, but here no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal. So who's doing the revealing here? We'll touch on that next time.